Hello again folks and this is the first screencast relating to the cardiovascular system. You will need to make extensive notes on this because in lesson we're going to give you some diagrams and some different things to label as we're going to test your knowledge from this particular screencast. So please make good notes and bring any questions to the lesson. Okay, the cardiovascular system itself is concerned with three different areas. The first of which obviously is the heart. We also need to know about different blood and blood vessels and the blood vessels in particular detail with regards to the arteries, veins, venules, capillaries, etc. There are five different functions of the cardiovascular system. These are thermoregulation, so essentially your, your heart and your blood vessels and your blood will keep your core temperature of your body so if you get too cold your heart will maybe speed up to increase the blood flow to your muscle groups and try and warm you up. Your cardiovascular system will also remove waste products so it will carry the rubbish from your body uh, to the kidneys and the liver so you can get rid of it. The obvious one it, it provides oxygen and different nutrient transport via the different blood cells and the bloodstream two interesting words in the last two functions the first one is what we call vasodilation and basically it increases the diameter of your blood vessels and therefore it allows more blood to pass through more of that in a moment and the second one is called vasoconstriction which is the reverse of vasodilation so it decreases the diameter of your blood vessels and it helps stop or, or slow down blood flow to certain areas of your body and a good way of showing those last two points is with this diagram. As you can see by the Bertie Bassets which are supposed to be arteries or, or veins essentially on the left hand side you have a normal artery or vein that's if you chopped your vein or artery in half like a carrot the inside of it will look like that so the red bit in the middle is blood passing through and the pink bit is sort of the inner wall if you like now the second diagram along shows what happens when you vasoconstrict so what arteries and veins do is they constrict the blood flow to stop it moving to certain areas for example if you were exercising and sprinting around full power your body will decide to shut off or slow down the blood flow to some of your organs because it needs more oxygen to your muscles so it will vasoconstrict so essentially the, the walls of the arteries will get thicker or close in and constrict the red blood in the middle you can see in that middle picture there's less red blood in the middle and it will constrict that blood flow to those areas. Now, the picture on the right, the furthest picture along, is vasodilation. So that's the opposite. So when we want more blood to go to a certain area, your arteries and veins will expand, the inner diameter will expand, and therefore that red bit on the last picture is much bigger because we need more red blood cells to come through. Okay, so again, if we were exercising, it might vasodilate to your muscles because it needs more uh, red blood cells going to your muscle groups to deliver more oxygen and it would vasoconstrict to your organs so it would shut off maybe areas such as the kidneys and the liver but it, would, it would keep your brain because that's an important organ but it might reduce the blood flow to those other areas because we need more mus uh, oxygen going to the muscles second thing you need to be able to do at this level is be able to label the heart and what I've done here is given you a very nice PDF picture of a heart and you can ignore some of the top sections such as the es esophagus and the trachea because that's to do with the respiratory system but essentially it's a very nice diagram this because it shows the deoxygenated blood side which is the blue side of the heart and where that's going to and it also shows the oxygenized sections of the heart and where that's going to. So what I'd like you to do please is somehow get yourself a copy of a picture of the heart and you need to be able to label this. Now key things you need to be able to label and I'll walk these through and highlight these as I'm talking. 
So if we start with the left hand side of the heart, which remember when you label it up is actually the right hand side of the heart. If you look at the top left chamber of the heart, that is called the right atrium. So remember that's your right side on the left, which is the blue top left. Underneath this is the right ventricle. So hopefully most of you will have done this in GCSE. If you then look at the red side of the heart, and the top right of the picture is the left atrium, and in the bottom right of the picture you have the left ventricle. So they are the four basic chambers of the heart and really important. Underneath each of these chambers, you'll see some funny pointy looking objects. These are the valves. So if we're going from the right atrium down, you then have the tricuspid valve. If you follow that round the right ventricle and up to the top right, you then have a semilunar valve. Okay. Sometimes that top right one is also called the pulmonary valve because it leads on to the pulmonary artery. On the right side of the heart you have the left atrium and that feeds down. The valve underneath that is called the mitral valve or the mitral valve, whichever way you want to say it. And if you follow that through to the left ventricle, you can just about make out another semilunar valve which attaches to the big red rooster looking thing at the top which is called the aorta. Now sometimes that valve is called the aortic valve but a semilunar valve will be fine if you want to label that. Other important areas to note are the pulmonary arteries which you can see the blue bit which is attached to the right ventricle and the pulmonary valve. That massive roostery looking thing at the top called the aorta, which is really important to label up. And also you can see some tubes either side of the heart in red. They are the pulmonary veins and they are also important to label. On top of the right atrium you can also see coming out of the top another tube. This is called the superior vena cava and the tube extends down and that tube along the bottom is called the inferior vena cava. This is the most you will need to know from a basic level but as I say take your time with this diagram make sure you know where those things are that I've just spoken about and go over this as much as you can. On top of that we also need to know how blood is circulated from the heart around the body. The easiest way to do this is if you take from the vena cava at the top, so we just talked about the superior and inferior, inferior vena cava in your heart, if you make your starting point there you can see those blood vessels or the lines are in blue. So it's carrying deoxygenated blood into the heart through the vena cava and that deoxygenated blood will come in through the right atrium, it will go through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle, that blood, the oxygenated blood is then pushed up through the pulmonary valve and up into the pulmonary artery and it goes through the pulmonary artery up into your lungs where then you will be breathing in oxygen and that changes that colour blue of deoxygenated blood into red. So it's now oxygenated blood because I've breathed in oxygen and through my lungs that's transported through the capillaries into the arteries. And that oxygenated blood then returns back to the heart and it comes in to the left atrium, goes down the mitral valve and goes into the left ventricle goes through the aortic valve and up through the aorta and then is sent through high pressure down to all of your different organs and also your major muscle group. So all that oxygen is transported by your blood vessels and your blood cells to your different muscle groups. Now as your muscle groups and your organs use up this oxygen it then changes the colour of the blood in the diagram to blue so then it becomes deoxygenated because we've just used it up 
some way, shape or form. And then it returns all the way back to the vena cava to start again. And that's how the circulatory system works. And again, you will need to know that in explicit detail before you come in to the lesson. A couple of things to finish up on. First of all, blood. Blood's really important in your body because it has three main functions. The first of which is obviously to carry oxygen and nutrients around your body, which is very important. The second thing it does particularly well, if you cut yourself, it clots together alongside the white blood cells to form a protective barrier. And that can help healing process and it also prevents you from getting infections. The last thing it does is itself fight infections and that can not only be through the idea of clotting but also from bacteria and viruses that are inside your body. So when you get a cold your blood works very hard to fight against that and to help sort your body out. Last slide is on blood vessels and here we need to know about arteries, veins, arterioles and capillaries. There are also venules. If you have a look at this diagram, it's quite a nice diagram because it shows all of the different things in one hit and probably makes it a lot easier to understand. So we start on the left. These are the arteries. Their job is to carry oxygenated blood to your organs or your muscle groups but they carry it away from the heart so once the heart has pumped it out oxygenated blood carries it away from the heart as they near to the capillaries which are those things in purple which is why I put in purple for, for the word capillaries before they get to the capillaries they start to reduce in size and that's what we call arterioles arterioles are effectively mini arteries and they do exactly the same job. They carry oxygenated blood away from the heart and towards the capillaries. And they actually connect with the capillaries. So they're very fine arteries. The capillaries themselves in purple are what we call connecting uh, mechanisms. And they help connect the arterioles to the capillaries and the capillaries also connect to your organs and muscle groups so they allow a transfer of oxygen and nutrients directly into your muscle groups or your organs. If you follow that diagram along from the capillary network you'll see what's called a venule. A venule is sort of the opposite of an arteriole really they're very fine veins and the venule starts to carry oxygen, uh, deoxygenated blood to the heart. So once we've used up our oxygen, which is why the colours turn from red to blue, the venules are the first port of call because they connect to the capillaries and they also connect into the vein and therefore they help assist carry deoxygenated blood towards the veins. The vein itself is the opposite of an artery. That is again carrying deoxygenated blood back to the heart. The veins are slightly larger than arteries but the capillaries, arterioles and venules are extremely small and it's important that you realise that. Okay, make extensive notes on this please guys. You must watch this more than once to get a hang of what's, what's going on here and the important information and then bring any questions you can to the classroom.